Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Gay Side Stories, where the gay shit goes. I am your host, Trillificent. Thank you so much for joining me for another week. As a reminder, you can listen to this show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, your favorite podcast app, or over at GaySideStories.com slash shows. Remember to use the hashtags GaySidePod and pods by qpoc when you're live tweeting or posting about the show make sure you guys are sending in your gay side mail over to gay side stories at gmail.com and that really can be anything it can be letters it can be compliments it can be show topic ideas stories whatever it is that you want to send in please do so and i'm thinking if you send something in I'm going to add it to the queer query portion of the show. So I may have some questions. And then if you guys have a question or you write in a story or something, then I'll put that in that part of the show. So send that stuff over. And now, finally, (laughs) introducing the Gay Side Culture series. This is the Gay Culture series that I've talked about for many months. It has taken some time to put together and then I took a break in the middle of it so it has all come to fruition it took me a little bit of time to figure out how exactly I wanted to do it I had to reach out to some guests and do all of that good stuff but it's here and I'm excited for you guys to hear what I've collected and the conversations that were had so first up let's hear about what gay culture is and what it means from a few participants. So you're going to be hearing from Falou over at the Get Into It podcast, Darius Amore, who is a former guest on the show, Marcus, a.k.a. Twitless Ghost, also a former guest, Joshua from the Art Accordingly podcast, Jared D. King, who's been on the show before, and Johnny Main from Black Boy Blitz podcast. So let's get into it. Gay culture is walking extra slow through the underwear aisle as a kid because you know that's the closest you're going to get to gay porn for a long time. Hey y'all, my name is Valu and I am the host of the Getting Podcast. Uh, I am a 21 year old uh, black gay man from France. I know I don't sound like a French person, but I surely am sis, so yeah, get into it bitch. Um, so Curtis asked us for his hashtag gay sat culture project, um, what gay culture is and what it means to us. Uh, for me, gay culture in my early years, I would say, uh, as a, because I always like, I, I come to my own sexuality really early in life. So I was really interested by that really at a young age, right? And I remember growing up um, and going on my computer and t- and um, searching literally tap on my uh, on my search engine gay stuff right uh, <laughs> now not such a for porn girl I know you went there but no literally for gay stuff and growing up all that I've seen was pretty much white right it was only the only thing that I've seen so I would latch onto these people so for me gay culture this at this really young age was. Everybody that was gay in every show ever, pretty much. So it was Woody and Grace. It was Kurt and Blaine on Glee. Um, it was a show like Queer as Folk and all that. Pretty much really why when I didn't even like see myself represented. But back then, it's like, oh, nigga, it's all you got. So you're going to live for it because other than that, you don't even got nothing else. Because only later in life, I got to see uh, Noah's Ark and all that. So that was gay culture. Gay culture was really through entertainment and media um and over the years it has changed tremendously because i've seen that as like within the gay culture there's like sub cultures right and i got to um see paris is burning amazing documentary about 90s ballroom scene in new york which is i think a staple for me for gay culture I and mean, more so queer folks of color that was for me like gay culture what it is now it's like a space created designed for us by us where we didn't being where we weren't really accepted by 
everybody else. So we created our own. And it's a place where you get to be who you are and being able to self-express yourself. I don't know if there's even a word, girl. A person of self-expression where you're allowed to be the fullest of your personality without anybody judging you on that. This is what, what gay culture is for me now. It's where, as like, you know, marginalized community, marginalized minority, we are able to come together and created these environments, these safe environments for us. And then again, it really like, um, of course, over on media and entertainment and things like that. And it's more so now, what it means to me now is that it's being able to create platform for ourselves. And it's like the Gay Science Story, which is an amazing podcast. Um, and it's like shows, podcasts, like What About Your Friends, podcasts of color. Um, like if you're black and it's like all these podcasts, all these podcasters are being just the, themselves on these shows and are able to reach out to people, like like-minded people, things that was not possible, like even like 10 or 20 years ago. And um, what it means to me is being able to, being able to find people like me because when you grow up when you grow up like as a minority and on t- like minority as a you know, black person and on top of that you add a sexuality you had you had this intersection in life where there's not a lot of spaces for you so it's great to being able to create environments for us and what it means to me is just like thanks to podcasting thanks to being like able to project my own personality on onto my podcast that has helped me connecting and reaching to people overseas and that are like-minded people and um, people that I've never in my goddamn life find here in white ass France. So yeah, so that what gay culture means to me. Thank you. What is gay culture? Well, I mean I guess for me, gay culture is not measuring up it's the constant battle between people telling you you're not worthy and you building yourself back up and the people telling you you're not worthy i'm not talking about straight people i'm not talking about anti-gay people i'm talking about people in the gay community telling other gay people that you were not worthy. You were not worth my time. You were not worth my space. You were not worth my energy. You're not worth my effort. You're not worth my friendship. When all some of us try to do is just engage in a conversation and try to have some kind of a connection, that's what gay culture is. And I'm sorry to be a pessimist, and I hate being the negative guy. Um, and you know, I, because it's, it's not fun, but that's what gay culture is. That's what it is to me, at least, because you go out to these events and stuff, you try to engage in conversation and people are constantly throwing back that telepathic question of what can you do for me? That, that question of how can you make me look better to my friends or to the world? And it's always coming from a place of, you know, you want to look better to everybody else. You're not worried about how you feel in this moment. It's, it's all about what I can bring to your life. It's all about what I can, how I can make you appear to the world. If I were a celebrity, if I were, you know, a model, if I were super rich, you'd be fine talking to me. But I'm none of those things. And so when I go out, And when I try to engage in conversation with you, you have no time for me. So that's gay culture. 
And right now I'm playing the game so that I can be rich, I can be a celebrity, and I can be beautiful so that you will finally pay me some freaking attention. Hi, I'm Marcus Johnson, um, a.k.a. Twitless Ghost on Twitter, a.k.a. Mr. J06, M-I-S-T-E-R, J06 on Instagram. Um, this is a conversation about what gay culture is to me. Um, gay culture is creativity, it's art, it's pride, it's identity. It's all these things encompassed in um, the beauty of what uh, it means to be human. I don't take for granted that um, diversity exists in this world and diversity does more than just um, distinguishes us and also adds beauty to this earth and to humanity. And when we as um, LGBTQ identify people um, look at the beauty and all of the human experience, I think that is what gay culture encompasses. Um, there are so many of us who do things creatively in art and music. There are people who are activists, people who are politicians, people who serve their community in a variety of ways, um, but people who are also just proud to be themselves. Um, my experience as a gay man over the past month during Pride Month has been really important and it's been a lot about um, why representation matters. I work in a school that is a middle high school hybrid and it's been super duper important for me to be able to be strong in my sense of self, um, not only as a black man, but also as uh, a gay man. Um, my sexual my sexual orientation um, and being able to represent that openly has been um, empowering for me but I've also seen how transformative it's been for um, the students in my school um, we celebrated Pride Week not too long ago um, and we tried to address all of the social emotional human sides of people um, as they deal with this lifestyle and growing up um, and it's essential um, for me as a person to be able to represent someone who can relate to their experiences, even if that's only one part of who I am. This week, I've been able to um, tell my coming out story to students and hear their coming out stories and the difficulties they've had with teachers and being denied Title I and Title IX rights because of their sexual orientations or whatever pronouns they decide to use. Um, and it's been uplifting and very encouraging for them to feel like they have a safe space um, where they can be represented not only by their peers, but um, adults who are in authority in the building. Um, and so um, while there are students in my building who are straight um, and who are black and who are male and who are female and all of these other um, descriptors. It's important that as a black gay man that students understand the importance behind um, diversity um, and equity and that we're able to celebrate that regardless of if it's someone's sexual orientation, someone's gender identity and expression, someone's religious beliefs, um, someone's race, someone's skin color. Uh, it's very important that all of these things make up humanity and that students are able to recognize and realize that those are the things that make us beautiful um, as humans. So it's been really important for me to be able to see how much representation matters. What's up world, this is Johnny. And I guess the question is, what is gay culture? By definition, gay culture are the arts and other manifestations of human intellectual achievement regarded collectively. So I take that as, you know, gay culture means all the art, the music, the social networks, clothing, education of any given group of people, in this case, gays and lesbians. My understanding of gay culture has changed throughout many years. Um, unfortunately, in my earlier years, middle school through high school and hell, even parts of college, um, gay and gay culture only spoke to 
and about white gay culture. When I heard gay on TV or saw it in the news, it usually was a white face attached to it. Unless you were on Oprah and you were living on a DL, but hey, we know how that went. Uh, very rarely was gay culture seen in media as being diverse or a culture that actually includes people of color. Um, and unfortunately, my experience of gay culture uh, has been very racist. Uh, there has always been like this clear divide between gay culture as it relates to white gays and lesbians and gays and lesbians of color. Um, but that's another episode. <laughs> Um, with all that said, what do I think gay culture is to me? Um, like mentioned before, it's the art, uh, it's the music, the fashion, it's slang, the colors, uh, the brotherhood, the sisterhood, you know, the fight and the pride, the resilience and all the amazingness uh, that we as gay and lesbian people share and disseminate within and throughout our people. Gay culture to me is rich and uh, affirming and complicated and complex and historical and future thinking and future forward. Gay culture for me is uh, humbling in that it is constantly a reminder of how far we've come and also how far we have to go. Gay culture is fashion and music and literature and uh, cinema and uh, it is inspiring because gay culture has birthed so much other culture and gay culture has been the derivative of so much of what we love about pop culture and how much we consume in the mainstream today. Uh, Gay culture was birthed out of lack of access to anything else. So it's revolutionary in that way in that we made something out of nothing. And what what resulted has been uh, so reaffirming and so life-giving and so sickening and so amazing time and time and time again, decade after decade after decade. Gay culture persists and grows and strengthens. It... Uh, It reinforces community and family. Gay culture has continued to always be present in my life and in my existence because I refuse to live my life without the artifacts of gay culture on me physically and how I speak and how I... um, and how I dialogue with my friends and how I exist in my space and how I work. Gay culture is uh, above all else and beyond um, love for oneself and love despite circumstance. And now let's dive a little bit deeper into the conversation with two gabies. I'm here with Luke and Lee. The pair, also known as Getting Gay, the podcast. Hello, peoples. How are you? Well, we're on a show. (laughs) I know, girl. (laughs) Thank you guys for joining me. (laughs) Oh, thank you. I'm going to try not to be too ridiculous. (laughs) Um, Me too. Good luck with that. (laughs) (laughs) So, first and foremost, why don't you guys tell my listeners a little bit about your podcast, Getting Gay? Oh, sure. Okay, so this was something that Luke and I started. Um, This is actually the 2.0 version of our original attempt at podcasting that we tried to do last year. We had one called Social Lens, which was really just test runs, and one of my friends was basically like our manager slash producer person that would be like this sounds bad you need to fix x y and z and we're like we're not getting anywhere with this so we rebranded because we wanted to kind of bring to attention to different topical issues specifically pertaining to like social justice stuff or just current events um give our little take on it um i got into 
podcasting last year with the read and I found them happenstance and like dive yeah. down the rabbit hole of podcasting. And I followed because yeah. he dragged me down with yeah, me. Yeah, I dragged him down with me. <laughs> but I'm glad you did. Yeah, so getting engaged is basically about we always say every week it's two gays helping each other to get gayer and essentially we're just trying to dive deep into how our intersection is identifying as gay men helps us understand the entirety of the world around us and all of the social issues that come about just living your regular schmegula life in um, in the States, particularly. And look good doing it. Yeah. Oh, well, y'all better say that. <laughs> confidant. Well, confidant. So I reached out to you guys to be on gay side stories because i wanted you to help me with the gay culture series that i've been talking about probably for the last few months specifically reached out to you guys because i wanted to get the perspective of some guys that are younger Maybe. yeah we're gabies yes gabies y'all are very 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 young rugrats i would say yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're not wrong. But hey, you're we all wrong. have to start somewhere. You have to learn. You have to what is it? Learn how to crawl before you can run, or suck dick, or whatever the term may be. I don't know. So let's talk about gay culture. First and foremost, what is gay culture to you? How do you define it? Um, do I go first? You can go first. All right. So I think it's just kind of. The mix of like values and beliefs and practices, uh, traditions or whatever that gay and queer people have kind of taken from society or rejected or tweaked, um, and it's just kind of the end result of what we've been going through and the representation that we've managed to gather through all of our various parts of life, um, and doing so under oppression and a lot of bullshit that we deal with through the larger world. Um, yeah, so I think, I don't know, I think that's all I feel about the general. Yeah. Um, I would have to say gay culture is definitely um, a culmination of like shared experience between um, gay identified individuals. And I know that in some instances we'll use gay as an umbrella term for all LGBTQ identified people. And, Similarly, it's just for us to find community and to bond and to identify that these particular um, cultural moments or items, things, whatever have you, are things that we use to highlight and specifically say that this is validity into who we are and what we've been through. And, you know, it's you have your first time with a guy or whatever, you know, we have these seminal experiences that we highlight and they hold value because we've assigned them value as particularly as gay people. Yeah. Well said. Well said. <laughs> so given your individual definitions of gay culture, what does it mean to you specifically? Uh, to me, I would have to say that it means um, finding solidarity and community. I would have to say those are the biggest things. Um, it's it's a culture where we, we find fam family where there should be none. Um, kind of the flower that grows through the concrete, if you want to get metaphorical yeah, about it. I agree. And I feel like it's sort of just, um, it's like a sign that we are, people who exist and that we have history and community and family and that we mean something and we're not like just a piece of history you can sweep under the rug and that we're people that are going to continue to flourish yeah yeah hmm. okay so i know lee and i spoke about this a little bit the first time i reached out about you being on the show and that is kind of a gap between the older and younger gays. So my question is specifically as it relates to culture, do you feel like there's a gap in the passing of the culture from older to younger gays? 
Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. I, I think the, um, the AIDS crisis really did irreparable damage to the community um, in ways that we're still trying to figure out and navigate. Um, and I, uh, I think I mentioned this to you as well, Luke, that um, we get people that come into matriarchal positions that had no intention of being a matriarch because the matriarch or patriarch of the community is now gone. And, and we lost them during the AIDS crisis. So that kind of passing of the torch doesn't happen in this seamless manner that it would have naturally for any other community because we just we lost the people that should have been passing the torch on to us. We had to go back and pick it up ourselves. And now we don't have that knowledge from an anecdotal perspective and from a deep community well. It's us trying to piece together the fragments of history that have been scattered or ultimately erased. For sure. And I feel like we don't, even with the people we have left from that time period and the people that were closely related to it, we don't make an effort as young people to like go back and figure all of that out. And I think that the social media and technology, all of this shit that we have now, it's just doing more to distance it. Um, you know, cause we can find about our history on Google or whatever, if we try to, um, but I don't think a lot of us do. And we also get a lot of, um, there's a lot of things in the way, like flashy videos and pop stars and stuff that we, that are great that we are lucky to have and are, you know, also big parts of our culture. But um, I think we also use it as a way to ignore what happened before us and kind of ignore what made it possible for us to be where we are. So specifically, what are some ways that you guys think we can help bridge that gap? Uh, I think at least uh, going back to Luke's point, the onus being on a lot of younger people is to utilize um, community resources because I have found just through my own experiences that individuals that are survivors, that are elders within our community, they are still active within the community. That, yeah. that communal desire has not left them and it has it's just been gutted out from the younger generation so i think with the younger generation taking that initiative to say i'm going to get involved in the community you'll run across people eventually like i ran across like five people working like volunteering in the summer for pride month two years like i think the year that pulse happened i ran into like yeah. five people who are who made it through the AIDS crisis and are lived to tell the story and I'm lucky enough to have um, a pro professors at my the university that I attend where it's the same story where I would have naturally run into them in the city if I was more engaged within the community uh, just because they're they haven't they have not had that spirit been like departed from them that they have a responsibility to fulfill with the way that the community is set up and that those who are disenfranchised in the community. And I feel like that is like a really admirable thing. And I feel like that's something that the younger generation lacks is this um, desire and um, urgency to go out and act like that. Um, I know it's different for you because you are kind of good at doing that, Lee. Um, but for me and a lot, I'd even say most of the younger gays, we don't feel the same pressure especially because we haven't dealt with the AIDS crisis or like a lot of extreme homophobia to the extent that our elders have had to. So we aren't, um, we aren't as inclined to help and take place in the community. Um, whereas like the elders, they grew up doing all this shit. And now even now when there's shit going on, they're the first to jump at it. Um, and you said you saw a handful of people. And I think that's really cool. Um, and I think that like, one way to bridge the gap is to try to bring back the sense of community that used to exist. And I feel like back with the social media and all of this, it's created this online atmosphere that is really helpful and can bridge gaps between people, um, but not so much generational. Um, I think we need to just care more about each other. And there's a lot of things with race and identity that go into this outside of just like, you know, let's all come together because it's not that simple, but I think it's something we need to work towards as like a sense of family 
just between all of us, regardless of generation and identities. Yeah. Okay. I wonder if part of that is that it just kind of comes with age because I'm in the middle as far as, I guess, generational gaze, depending on how far you want to go. But I think there's a fundamental difference between gays in their 20s and their 30s and then in their 40s and of course 40s 50s and so on and so forth but as a gay man in his 30s while i was kind of born during that epidemic of hiv and aids i didn't really experience it to the same extent that someone 10 years older than me would or older than that we were kind of on the tail end when the medicines were really starting to work. They were finding the right cocktails. And so in the early 2000s, when I kind of I don't know, came of age, quote unquote, it wasn't as a big of a deal, I guess, if that makes sense. Like it was still a shocker if you had a friend that came and said, hey, I'm I've been exposed to this virus but it was like okay so you taking your cocktail and you're gonna be good right and it's like yeah I'm, I'm gonna be good whereas someone a little older than me would have had a different experience and i say all that to say that when i was younger in my 20s i didn't have that sense of community i didn't have that sense of urgency to do community acts and do community works and it came with age it came with when I got into my thirties, realizing there's more to this life than whatever you see on TV or whatever you choose to do in the privacy of your own home. There's more to it than sex. There's more to it than jacked. There's more to it than parties and all of that stuff. It's part of the reason why I started this podcast to try to give something back to the community. So I definitely think part of that comes with age. I also feel on the other end, and this will probably be dissected more when I have different guests on to talk about this topic. Part of it falls on the older generation because in a lot of instances, not all, because I know the all is sometimes heard when it's not spoken. So not all, but I think in a lot of instances, older gays they look at the younger generation as meat and not as students if that makes sense Mm, yeah they look Mm. like they look at them as something to collect and to for lack of a better term fuck than something someone to say i need to pass this knowledge on and it's those caveats of the community like the the in the ballroom scene when they have the houses where they really pass on that knowledge and that just custom and culture but your average run of the mill gay man that's in his 40s is probably not looking at a 20 something saying this is someone that I need to mentor this is someone that I need to help they're probably looking at them like ooh young Tenoroni yeah. What's up with the what's up? Woo, you better preach that word, preacher. <laughs> <laughs> and a, shout out to the ones that do. You know, shout out to the older gays that mentor and try to impart knowledge and wisdom. But again, we have to be honest in these conversations. When I get on these jacked and I get on these apps, or even when I get on Twitter these or instagram i'm like these older men are not like ooh, you know here's some young minds that i can help shape so that they don't make the same mistakes that we made 20 years ago they're looking at them like mm, yummy yummy and my tummy level up <laughs> yeah yeah i experience this a lot um in general just a lot of the people that i've come into contact with when i'm in gay spaces are like significantly older than me and oftentimes it seems less than safe um because they're kind of let's be honest they're they they can be a little predatory 
I feel like fear of being old comes into play a lot here and in our community in general. And I feel like kind of, I mean, I think that as young people, we don't really care for our elders because like we're like you, they're old or whatever. But then when it comes to old people, it's like they're trying to go back sometimes or something. So they're like looking for a younger audience of um, suitors, I guess. And I think uh, we're, did we talk about second adolescence yet? No, we, we, we had technical problems with that episode. Remember? So, right. <laughs> um, well, we plan on talking eventually about like gay loneliness and the second adolescence we did idea. The gay loneliness, though. Um, and we kind of talked about how you might go back um, and kind of try to live experiences you would when you were younger. And I feel like that happens throughout our community because that's something that I think that is one thing that we have in common with our elders for sure is that we definitely we don't right. like experience things at the right or at the typical time for someone in our yeah and, and the reason why I specifically focused in on the um, HIV slash AIDS crisis specifically because I think that's where that desire for youth kind of not that it wasn't already yeah. present but I think it escalated because with the way that your body would work, your body would look a certain way if you were suff like if the if HIV had kind of progressed, mm -hmm. it you took on like your physical form actually changed and you kind of had like a weak, like fleshy kind of upper body part and it wasn't well defined muscle. So to circumvent that kind of gaze of like ill gross, like the whole clean dirty dichotomy started coming Which about. Is, uh, but yeah. With that, I that's why I kind of like focus in on that because I think that's kind of getting at what the both of you are talking about as though like that's what's kind of fueling the engine behind some of this still to this day, and I don't think that everybody recognizes sure. that. I feel like also in just our our view of age and youthfulness and this like trying to obtain new things. I mean, that's just something that our entire society kind of dwells in all the time. Mm -hmm. And then it's, you know, compound with all of this and our community in general. Just, I think that's a big problem in the gay community for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so, absolutely. The chasing of youth is, a uh, is definitely something that needs to be talked about more. And, I don't want to say conquered because I don't necessarily think it's always a bad thing, but I think it leads people to do bad things and to treat other people in bad ways. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know if I want to, I'm going to throw something out here. Even I'm not sure how I feel about it yet though, but like we get all of this shit about like pedophilia and stuff. And it's just, I feel like there's a lot of, turmoil in our community that kind of can like paint that image for a lot of outsiders and it's not I mean it's bullshit because it's not really true for the majority of people but there are you know there are always people who are not good people in any community um yeah so I think that's what the generational gap at least particularly when we look at trying to identify gay culture and this like obsession of youth I think that's probably why they're more willing to approach you because they think, oh, you're actually like eight, 16 to 18 when you walk in the club, even though you don't look 16 to 18, but uh -huh. presumably that's what they think. I mean, it depends on... Yeah, it depends on how much facial hair, honestly, yeah. but... Because um, right now I just look like... You you look your age, but yeah. um, in, in those instances particularly, they're going to approach you because they think that you snuck in. And like, like I, they do. and also age in our community is weird too because like you can see some twinky guy and it's either like oh you're like 18 or 45 you know and like I've made that mistake with someone who I thought was like at the most like 25 and I like ended up like hanging out or whatever and then later I was just we were talking and he was like yeah I'm 40 I was like oh my god Oh, yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> I... Uh, yeah, so I feel like the the passing of culture 
has a lot of blockades, mm-hmm. particularly for the gays, that they need to kind of recognize if we're going to ever really get to one kind of concrete, solid definition of identifying what the culture is for everyone and kind of like that community knowledge and, and value system kind of being a, a transparent thing. So when you like look at ethnicities, particularly like since Jalopson and I are black, you can you can see like you know exactly like you know your uncle's gonna act this certain way and they're going to tell you these certain things at this point in time and age. And it just kind of runs across the gamut for every particular race. At some point or another, you're gonna run across one family member who's gonna be like, this is what happens with sex. This is what you need to check for. This is what you like. You know, they're going to give you that run of the mill kind of talk. With gays, you don't really get that unless it's someone who's a little, who's basically your peer, but a little bit older. I mean, I feel like you get it just like through the heterosexual. Right. It's yeah. it's not, but it's not from that kind of direct line of passage. Yeah, thing. it's not. Yeah. I know. It's hard because there are so many more young gays than there are older gays, too. Like, it's almost. I mean, I don't know if there's more, but there's. It seems like there's more younger gays. Um, yeah, so, I think it's, yeah. it's as as time goes on because it's getting better. I won't say that it's good or safe, but it's there's more awareness, so younger people are realizing that they are different and what that difference means at younger ages. So I think there is some truth in what you're saying, Luke. What's, in your opinion, the important parts of the culture that every gay man should have some passing knowledge of? Um, definitely how to navigate gay spaces. Because um, Luke and I talked about this a little bit during Pride Month. Um, but understanding what it means to walk into a gay bar and like what the potential dangers are but what you can also find simultaneously like i don't you don't really get that kind of talk or understanding because we made some really dumb decisions when we first went out because we just we had no idea like we were the only like real like we we knew gay people but we were the only two gay people that we could trust at the time (laughs) for information so going into that space we had no idea it would have been nice if we had easier access to like just even the community center because there's a community center here but it's on the north side tucked away next to like the health clinic and it's in the gay part of town so it's like you know if you're it yeah. goes and we we end up getting trapped in the hyper visibility um conundrum that a lot of like community organizing for lgbt folk find themselves in of like hyper visibility versus positive people not utilizing them but that's different topic for another day but um we in in having access like that that would have been nice or even just the online video that i could have looked up on youtube saying this is what you need to do this is what you don't need to do and go out and flourish something that simple would have helped or like a step-by-step guide of like how to properly fleet (laughs) (laughs) first time like you know, um, there are thankfully more sex ed videos for gay yeah. sex because people are involved in nonprofit organizations where they want to get this information out there. But they're usually made by people that are very close in age to Luke and I. Like, they're not in their 30s. I mean, I think that's something to look forward to is, like, when our generation will be teaching, it's like, the younger generation yeah. because there will be so many, there's just going to be so much more information for them available. Um, and partly because, again, the AIDS crisis is, like, not so much a crisis now um, here. And, but otherwise, I think that, I think it's really important that we know, like, how our movement started um, just for the sake of, like, oppressed people now. Um, it's really easy, especially if with white gays and white cis gays, to just ignore the fact that black trans people like started a movement and now we're here and and now we can just like overlook all of it and treat everyone who isn't a cis white gay like garbage pretty much and we're even trying to remove the the t and remove the b remove the l L. (laughs) and everything in between yeah just 
I, I think it's important as a culture to maintain your history uh, just for the sake of well, knowing your history, but also yeah. so we can treat each other like human beings. Um, Got to know where you came from yeah. so you can go forward. Because all of the fun stuff about our culture, like music and just traditions, like monogamous versus polyamory versus whatever, like you're going to get that because that's what's exciting, you know, for most kids growing up and it's all over the place online, but actual history is harder to come across. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like it's kind of our job to keep that torch going. Right? Yeah. My, yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> I agree. So since you mentioned the fun stuff, I'm curious about your opinion on this next thing. So why do gay men hold female musicians and actresses in such high regard? Um, (laughs) I'll let you do it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) No, we're laughing because we we did a whole episode. (laughs) It's so like sort of sort of girl. We did two of them now. So mm. no, it's because we're gay, so it came up, but it was not the like it was not the point of the episodes. Yeah, I know we we, we're gay. We can't help it. Um, (laughs) I think that we hold them in high regard because they portray a level of power in um, oppression that I think gay men can easily identify with. For sure, I think. and it's not to say that, like, you know, mask for mask gays go out and flourish and, you know, gobble up all the bus that you can. That's your prerogative. Fine. But I think that with a lot of gay men, they look <laughs> at femininity um, in conjunction to and oftentimes conflate that with their, um, their gayness. And in doing so, they can see something that is desirable and attainable that they want to be able to manifest within themselves. So there's that level of attraction. So you can identify with that power of you're under the system of patriarchy. You're supposed to adhere to these gender roles. And with strong female lead musicians, oftentimes or artists or pop icons, whatever have you, they oftentimes are going against the grid. I'm not going to be a full on Beyonce stand right now, but she is a really good example of this being a black woman specifically and in a white dominated world she is still out here living her fullest best life possible so of course the gays are going to go up because they're like i bitch i want that too yeah i feel like um i don't know i I do think there is conflation between femininity and gayness but i think that just as men a lot of gay men don't i mean obviously men aren't taught or expected to be um feminine or embody any of those like you know, typically feminine ideals or values or anything. Um, but a lot of gay men want to, and they want to be able to embrace their femininity and also embrace their, like, caring and tender sides and um, just their ability to express themselves and stuff. And female artists in particular do, they do, they have a really good platform where they are able to do that um, and also it's like accepted from them so besides just being easy to relate to it's also kind of what we have as far as representation goes like we don't like the giant lack of representation we don't have a whole lot of gay men or queer people at all that we can look up to and be like oh look at this person doing this like thing or acting this way or dressing like this we don't we it's just recently that we've been getting that um and even though we do get it, it's not a lot. And um, female artists, they're there. Um, and they're in the spotlight because that's because the whole world likes them, you know? It's not just the gays. Um, and we... So, yeah, there's always, like, this queering of other not, like, necessarily queer things just for the sake of us, like, having something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) Very interesting. So let's wrap this discussion up, switching it a little bit back to the culture. In what ways do you think the culture can be improved? Um, 
I think um, recognizing, um, after having this, I think recognizing age would be a big thing. So if you're in your 20s, enjoy your 20s, but like also know that there's a time for your 20s to be enjoyed and there's like they can start and they can end like you know accepting that and moving on because I think a lot of the gays identify gay culture as like you start in your 20s and you don't stop um so I think recognizing that there's a start and stop to this um so far as like the whole party life and you know busting it wide open on the dance floor all that goodness um I think that's probably an improvement that needs to be made is like, you know, it's age appropriate things. Like we should be moving on to living our lives for the better reasons yeah. we've had our fun. Now it's kind of like time to grow up. Are you saying it's okay to mature? Yes. I think that's one of the things that the gays have trouble with. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I think that I completely agree with that. Um, I also think, we need to kind of practice what we preach as far as being like open-minded and accepting and caring uh, because that's, I mean, that's something as a community, like we'll unanimously say that and talk about that. Um, but then we'll all just turn around and like leave our trans family in the dirt or we'll put no fats, no femmes, no blacks, no Asians in our grinder profiles or we'll and we're just a lot of us in the community, we're just giant hypocrites and I think that's something we need to change, um, just because it will help things on a macro level and on an individual level, because when you have humanity for others it will it'll reciprocate. Um yeah, uh, just yeah, get rid of ageism, all of that good stuff, I think. I think we do a lot of things well, though, so I I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm good. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to think of something that I wanted to say as soon as we leave, and I'm just going to be... That's fine, girl. <laughs> maybe for you, <laughs> I'm going to put myself up for it. All right, so let's close it out. Any parting thoughts on the topic? Um, no, not for me. Um, I think that, you know, the girls, at the very least, um, you know, I would leave a caveat for the younger ones just to say, you know, recognize that gay culture is a real thing. And, and this is for, like, the young, young ones, like, younger than us, like, not necessarily the 20-something crowd, because I think they recognize it. Um, that, uh, you know, it's it's more than just a meme. Like, when we say, like, gay culture yeah, is yeah. this, it's, it's usually us trying to laugh at the pain. <laughs> like, it's that is not... gay culture, but it's not the only part. <laughs> it's like, it's not the only part. When we do that, we're typically laughing because it's like, oh, girl, remember when we were in the struggle? Yes. <laughs> like, that's all that is. Don't take it literally. Um, you know, recognize that there's... Like I said before, there's a time and place for everything. Um, and, yeah. you know, you can definitely get your giggles on, but, like, there's there's real shit, too. Yeah, and that's something I struggled with when I was younger, was just, like, acknowledging that it was a real thing that mattered. And I always had this issue with being, like, too gay or something. Yeah. Um, I just hope that... I mean, I know it's not always going to be safe to participate or to, like, openly enjoy gay culture or whatever, and that's fine, but don't think that it's wrong or that you can be too gay or not um because being gay or queer just like it just like makes you better than everyone else so like just like own that you know um i'm joking but like for real own your queerness and try to be accepting of it even if others won't be and then when you get to a point where you will be accepted it will be like 10 times better because you won't have to deal with a bunch of bullshit Yep, yep. Internalized bullshit. Yeah. Ooh wee. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys again for coming onto the show and giving your thoughts. It was very insightful and enlightening. 
Um, oh, thank you. I've never been told that before. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, where can people find you guys? Oh, do you want me to do it in a particular order? I do. Okay, God, you are such an anal bitch. Okay, so you can find us on Twitter. Shut up. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Getting Gay Pod. Um, and for all inquiries, business, or just the like of you want to just talk to us. Or hate mail. Shut up. Uh, you can find us at Getting Gay Pod at gmail.com. Maybe where we, we can listen to. Oh, yes. And you can also listen to us on the SoundCloud, um, Apple Podcasts, and we are on Overcast too, which I think is just SoundCloud. Like, we don't really know how that works. Um, but yeah, we're on there as well. So, you know, oh, and of course, you can also find us if you look at the hashtag pods by QPOC um, database and directory. Hey. Yes. You can find me at Luke Amadeus. Uh, it's A M A D E U S at Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah, and you can find me at all things OMG. It's Lee Thomas, that being of which Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Wow. All right. Well, you guys have that down to a science. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's because Luke's anal. Oh. Um, uh, he so he he is me. We are one. I see you, Luke. I see you. All right, you guys. That wraps up this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. Be on the lookout for part two coming next week. Remember, go to GaySideStories.com. That is the hub for all things related to the show. Email your suggestions and listener letters over to GaySideStories at gmail.com. Please take a little bit of time and go over to Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast app that you use that allows you to do so and leave a rating and a review. It's been a little while since I've had one. So if you listen to the show and you like what I'm doing, please do me that favor. And if we're friends and you haven't left a show a uh, review for my show, we're going to fight. And that's just what it is. OK, on site. But <laughs> with all that being <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. You guys could be listening to any of these. God, there's so many podcasts out there, which is amazing. And you could be and probably are listening to a lot of those. And you also listen to this show. So I really do appreciate you guys. And I appreciate everyone who shares the show, who likes the show on SoundCloud and shares there, who comments on Twitter, who likes the posts on Instagram, anything that you do to show support to this show. I am very, very, very appreciative. I can't say that enough. Speaking of, you can also find me over on Ratchet Ramblings on the CSPN with Jeremy and Candace discussing black reality TV shows such as Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. So if you want to get a little bit of a different take of me, um, not going to lie, I am something else over there. Not that I'm a different person, but it's a different platform. It's, it's just different. So check that out. And as always, love yourself, whether you're a bottom, top, verse, or just oral. Protect your walls. I'm out. I'll see you guys next week.